today we are starting uh, the section b of unit 1 in the section a of the unit 1 we uh, try to understand what is meant by values what is meant by morals what is meant by norms we also try to understand as to uh, from where do values come from and what are the major ramifications of having certain values in your professional career or growth and we also try to understand a bit about ethics and uh, i said that ethics is when your values play out and i also explained to you that generally generally ethics is used in the sense of a common code for all people who work in an organization or a group the organization could be a cultural organization for example it, it could be an organization which uh, which uh, whose objective is to propagate the art of bharatanatyam across indians living in usa it could be an organization like that but that organization will also have some ethics it could be like uh, if you are learning performing arts in uh, indian culture students have to give a solo performance and there is a lot of pressure exerted by the parents on such organizations to organize the solo performance of their uh, kids so it it is decided the panel which will decide which student will get to perform where what will be the order of precedence of performance this has to be done by a panel which is independent so one student's father cannot be on that panel because he will obviously uh, influence the order of precedence and even if he doesn't do so people will suspect him you know so you not only need to be ethical you need to appear to be ethical in this second section the ip university course has been subdivided into a few sub sections first is relevance of ethics and values in business why is ethics relevant in business bhai aap koi subject pad rahe hain aap kisi cheez ke bare mein pad rahe hain to wo cheez zaruri hai kyun ye to pata hona zaruri hai aur dusra what is the managing process and ethics management ka process kya hai ye ethics kaise usko uska samavesh kiya jata hai we will also understand what is meant by managerial performance if a manager is appointed in an organization then he has certain key results areas and he has to demonstrate certain leadership traits his key result areas could be in terms of achieving business objectives in terms of developing his team in terms of creating and nurturing a good atmosphere in the organization in his department or in his section and all this must add to the brand value of the corporate image of the organization you see there are so many awards being given as to most respected organization and this is an award which is considered to be most coveted award organization most loved by employees these are awards given by various institutions to companies so managerial performance we will also have some case studies we will also study uh, what are the various ethical issues in the corporate world more specifically in the indian business environment and last but not the least this sub section contains a very important subject which is called vedant what is meant by vedant vedanta or vedant ye aapne suna hoga so what is meant by vedant what is the ethos of vedant in management is it relevant is it just superficial is it only bookish knowledge or it has some relevance can it help a manager perform better in his job can it give you the moral strength to perform well does it teach you how to navigate 
in difficult times. For example, currently we are going through a time when a lot of companies are downsizing. So, what does our spiritual inheritance tell us? How should we behave in such times? This will be covered in Ethos of Vedanta in Management. So let us try to understand as to what is a business organization. A business organization is an organization which has a stated objectives and all the resources, all the stakeholders of the organization, they work towards achieving that business objective. You must have seen various companies, they describe themselves in terms of mission statement, vision statement. And they have their yearly plans. They have some co some companies have strategic plans which are five year plans or ten year plans. So they decide well in advance. For example, when I was working for Reliance in the year 2000, 2002-2003, people used to talk that in the next 20 years we should be in a position to have an influence over. 10% of the wallet size of a customer. Iska kya hai? Ki 2002 mein soch te the ki 2020 mein uh, wallet, matlab jo aapka purse hai, Indian, kisi bhi Indian household ka jitni spending hai, uska 10 pratishad hissa, usme humari bhaagi dari honi chahiye. Aur isko kaise achieve karenge? We will achieve it by giving very high value for money. We will give it by providing best technology at highly affordable prices. So this is what business organization is. So Abhi, we, what we have to see is what is meant by business. Business may hack on. Business may anybody who is associated in business is called a stakeholder. So <clears throat> Fernando, Professor Fernando in his book, the reference which I will provide you, has been, he has done a very uh, he is, he is nicely demarcated stakeholders. He has said there are two state type of state stakeholders. One is a primary stakeholder and one is a secondary stakeholder. So what is a primary stakeholder? Primary stakeholders are stakeholders jinke upar aapki company nirbhar karti hai, uska survival. Survival of the firm depends upon primary stakeholders. Secondary stakeholders are those who can affect your business or who will get affected by your business. They are secondary stakeholders but not as much as primary. So first and foremost primary. So these so naturally primary stakeholders will get greater and greater degree of attention from business operation. Right? So first and the foremost in business organization in terms of stakeholders is stockholders stakeholders s t a k e stakeholders and stockholders what is meant by stock stock means shares stockholders means those who hold stocks of your company those who hold the shares of your company those who are the owners of the company it is but natural that stockholders are most important for business organization why are stockholders important? Stockholders are important because based upon their vision, based upon their wish, the company's objectives are formulated. So you must have seen that if people say that, okay, if this is a business which is being run by a Tata Group company, then the business objectives may be not profit maximization, but most value to the customer. A Tata organization will also look after the uh, people around the factory. It will also think about the nation. So stockholders are very important. Whereas, you know, there were some old business houses in India. Their primary objective is profit maximization at all cost. Akal pad raha hai, holding kar do. Or black marketing kar do. Aise bhi organizations the hamare desh mein. So first and foremost is stockholders. Second most important is employees. 
if you see the last or the latest annual journal meeting the speech made by the chairman uh, managing director of uh, reliance group mukesh ambani mukesh ambani said one of the biggest things he learned from his dad was sahas courage and he says i believe in hiring the best employees keeping them very happy and i believe in giving them targets in which they have to stretch themselves employees are critical for every, every organization believe me employees can make a company and employees can mar a company think about a big company like ranbexy which was one of the most respected pharmaceutical companies in the world look at where the original shareholders of ranbexy are one has just been granted bail the two brothers okay they were all surrounded by employees who were not courageous enough to stop these promoters when they were getting influenced by extraneous forces which were not beneficial to the company so such a big business house such a respected pharmaceutical company crumbled in 5 to 6 years employees are very important in gurgaon there was a factory in which the militant union it set on fire a hr manager of a corporation so this company took a vow that they will do anything and everything in india but they will not do it in gurgaon it's a wrong i mean you know you know gurgaon is a flourishing business hub it has got a great industrial climate but what i'm saying is if one or two employees or a set of employee union can uh, can can bring such a bad name and it can kill a company or it can make a company tcs infosys wipro all these companies are great today hcl are great today because of the dedicated employees the top management the middle management the knowledge workers third is customers actually customer should be at the forefront of all business endeavors but here we are keeping customers as number 3 because although customers remain the focus of the company but customers also keep changing you keep on coming you keep on devising new technology new ideas customers change the products change but customers remain the linchpin of every business enterprise if the customers are not happy if in the mind of the customer your product is bad the customers will boycott your product what happened with maggi noodles some government official said that it contains monosodium glycolate or msg and it contains excessive lead but what did people do what did customers once maggi made a comeback the customers went in droves and bought maggi maggi contributes nearly 25% to the profitability or sales i am not sure of the of nestle incidentally i also worked in nestle when i was 20 years of age nestle was called food specialties limited then why it was called food specialties limited because the government of india had said you have to sell off your shares and bring down your shares the foreign entities had to bring down their shares to less than 50% so they also changed the name they made it food specialties limited i was working for them from their daryaganj office their offices their their corporate office is still m5a connot circus i still remember it so what i'm saying is customers so a, a set of happy customers key customers You, if you look at caterpillar caterpillar which is into heavy machinery equipment its sole focus is customer so even the oil which you put the machine oil or the engine oil caterpillar will test that oil they will give it a name caterpillar engine oil cat oil 
because they want that their customers their machinery expensive machinery should not suffer if they are allowed to use any brand of oil so they will brand it cat oil it's a great marketing strategy also customers why are customers primary and not secondary because if customers boycott you then what do you have so imagine a very big real estate uh, corporation and their first project customers are not happy by word of mouth bad publicity they will kill the brand another very important segment of stakeholders which is <coughs> very very vital is suppliers all this problem which has arisen after pandemic largely it's a supply issue supply chain issue you have a reliable supplier in china but is china as a country a friend of india or a foe of india so suppliers should be looked into a diff entirely different light suppliers can make or mar a company today in the making of hero motorcycles most of their components are outsourced non essential components what happens if all the suppliers they decide that they are not happy with the payment they form an association and they stop supplying hero to hero motorcycles or to honda or to suzuki or to bajaj so suppliers are very crucial they can make or mar you last but not the least creditors why are creditors important creditors means those jo aapko paisa dete hain when you invest money you invest in business you have your own capital which you raise from shareholders but you also depend upon banks or creditors a creditor could be your bank next door it could be international bank or a creditor could be your foreign partner who is giving you ecb external commercial borrowing i am dealing with all these things in my practical life so i can tell you creditors are very important the supply line the credit line business depends on this one percentage lowering of credit one percentage point it can have very positive impact on the overall business so let's go through the list primary primary stakeholders are those survival of the firm depends upon these entities stockholders or shareholders employees customers suppliers and creditors in the next video we will talk about secondary stakeholders let's now understand what are the secondary stakeholders of business organization just to recap we said primary stakeholders are ones on which the survival of the business depends they are your stockholders your employees your customers your suppliers and your creditors and i gave you various examples secondary stakeholders are those stakeholders who can impact your business who can get impacted by your business but it is not necessary that they will impact your business as much as the primary stakeholders can impact at the top of the list i have mentioned media media is a secondary stakeholder but a very important stakeholder suppose the whole media had not turned against china it is possible that the stringent steps which the government of india has taken against china and the chinese businesses i am not saying rightly or wrongly i have another video on my youtube channel you can watch it but media played a key role key role for lot of lot of chinese businesses who may not even be aware of indian media sometimes this role is positive also media has been able to tom tom that active pharmaceutical ingredient api which is the key component which goes into formulating or manufacturing of a medicine it is very important and 70% of this is coming from china so this has set 
the Indian authorities thinking, let's develop alternative sources to API. So this is a, so it will impact a lot of companies because it is true that India for China is not a very big market. Indian market contributes only less than 5% to the Chinese exports. But some key industries, this is very important. A, a, a channel, I think Veon channel has been able to highlight how some of the Chinese companies, tire companies are existing only because of the Indian market. So why should India import tires from China? So this is the role media plays. Second is the consumer groups. What are consumer groups? Consumer groups are largely those pressure groups which act in the interest of society at large and particularly consumers, pressure consumer groups. The earliest example of a consumer group is Common Cause. Common Cause was an organization non-governmental organization which was set up by Shri H.D. Shuri. He was father of Arun Shuri who, who was the minister in the Vajpayee government and an eminent journalist and an economist and a historian. His father H.D. He formed Common Cause and he formed it to look after the interest of pensioners as to why government must keep on giving increments to pensioners and he tried to safeguard the interest. So this had a big impact on the outflow of the government. So you can't really call actually common cause a consumer group, you can call it a citizen group. But another example, there is a there is an NGO which is a very small NGO called Binati. It is responsible, Binati is responsible for ensuring fair practice in the trade of pharmaceutical industry because they said that on MRP lot of chemists there was a time they used to charge tax on MRP so they were responsible instrumental their movement was instrumental in ensuring that when, he, when they mentioned MRP when any manufacturer mentioned MRP it also said inclusive of all taxes you know so consumer groups are very important it is and companies have to organizations have to take care of consumer groups and they have to meet them and satisfy their legitimate demands and they have to manage them suddenly a new coca-cola plant comes up in Varanasi and the farmers they find that some of the effluent which is factory waste is finding way to, into their farmlands which is bad for the crops. Consumer groups will come and they will start to demonstrate against the factory. This has happened in the past. You see, all sugar plants who want to come up with ethanol unit, it's the norms are very stringent. You have to have zero effluent. You cannot, you cannot put back the waste material into the river bed, into the rivers or into the neighboring fields this is all this has all been achieved by consumer groups third most important stakeholder is government i did not elaborate this government one day can decide that uc browser is no longer required to be in india because they don't satisfy the norms of integrity and uh, confidentiality so, UC browser, sorry for this, my, my throat was getting itchy. So, UC browser will may have to go. It just decided that, you know, couple of apps, TikTok app has to go. So, a comment is very powerful. Comment can decide that on petroleum products, on crude oil, Instead of zero duty, zero import duty, I will put I will put 10% import duty. So this will raise the price of petroleum products in India, right? Government can decide that this particular industry 
needs more foreign direct investment so in this particular industry the percentage of share holding of foreign companies can go up from 49% to 70% suddenly for example insurance suddenly big insurance companies would like to come and we try to become a important player in the indian insurance market suppose government says okay in the field of education any foreign company can come and set up university in india full 100% stake is allowed so a government policy a government policy can have a major impact yeah it it, it is true that governments don't government good governments don't change their policies every day because if you change your policy every day you become the country as a destination for investment becomes less attractive another very important organ if you take entire ecosystem as a body another very important organ in the entire ecosystem of a business is judiciary a judicial a judicial decision can have lot of bearing upon the business the when i say judiciary i include all the tribunals in it and all the arbitration panels and everything into it the amount of taxes which vodafone idea has to give deposit to indian exchequer it has been achieved by the strong will of the government and because judiciary stood up and said okay this these penalties these taxes have to be paid and they have to be paid by this date otherwise the this 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 will be the action okay it was supreme court which cancelled the licenses of many telecom companies many telecom companies the companies who were awarded license during the d raja regime when raja was the communications minister telecom minister so a country if if judiciary is independent strong reliable respected then that country sees lot of investments for example australia sees lot of foreign direct investment but a country like shard or niger or pakistan where judiciary is not supposed to be so independent although i believe the supreme court of pakistan also has excelled sometimes in giving their judgments it has been ramrod straight so countries where judiciary is not it does not have a reputation of being unbiased or independent those countries don't get so investments judiciary a fair judiciary unbiased independent judiciary is very important competitors can have competitors can have huge impact on your business telecom industry you should ask airtel that what impact the arrival of jio had on airtel and vodafone and idea and airsel and tatas so tata closed and reliance jio uh, reliance uh, communication or um, anil amani that one closed airsel closed vodafone and idea merged good idea and airtel ceased to be profitable for the first time in so many years airtel made a loss i remember there was a time airtel was when airtel was investing in africa so somebody said that it is easier for an indian tennis player to win wimbledon in 2020 than it is for airtel to make a profit airtel africa to make a profit so they said it's all a waste but look the things have reversed today it is airtel africa which is which people say is the saving grace was airtel india but of course the airtel group will come up very strongly very strongly because 
they have been quick to understand they have been quick to implement a plan and they have been quick to understand that they just cannot fight geo on the battle of pricing alone that's why you see they say okay we are we are putting up so many towers every day you see them demonstrating to you in an advertisement that their network is actually the fastest network in india so competitors have a huge impact on your business general public society in general it has an impact on business i read in times of india yesterday that the leader of bjp in jharkhand or uh, was it chatisgarh i think it is in jharkhand she sent i mean let, 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 i think i am getting confused in, in the states but the leader of an opposition party she sent rakhi to the chief minister of a particular state and said on this rakhi please fulfill your promise of enforcing prohibition in your state sharab bandi karo apne state mein because in her constituency in this lady's constituency whenever she is going she is being asked by the women to ensure that prohibition like the prohibition in bihar is enforced in the state i think the state is jharkhand so see this is this is what general public does it is general public which forced all the liquor shops to be closed on the national highways because they think it's a safety hazard people stop their vehicles they get drunk they create create nuisance on the highways and then they meet with accident so general public and society also has a huge impact has a huge impact on our business organization there are many other stakeholders like trade unions local community the environment rules as such political groups trade ad- uh, associations advocacy groups which are also secondary stakeholders of a business organization i would like to mention one thing here that it is not always these this compartmentalization is not a watertight thing it is possible that you know any one organ can become most potent and most vocal and most impactful in a particular point in time for example the government it it appears that the survival of chinese business in india depends upon government what happens if government tomorrow says all chinese all chinese products including those who have factories in india should be banned so what happens to oneplus what happens to vivo what happens to redmi they have investment they have plants in india so this slide or this video presentation it is largely about the important stakeholders and why why is this important to understand for us it is important for us to understand is if we don't know if we don't know very well who are the entities who are the people who can impact us positively or negatively we will not be able to devise a strategy or a tactic to manage our relationship with them in a transparent fair and ethical manner business does not does not operate in vacuo no business can operate in vacuo in fact only thing which operates in vacuum is nothingness even sound needs a even sound needs a medium for transmission isn't it sound cannot travel in vacuum so business <coughs> let's take the case of uh, i was 
in a in a institute two days ago. That institute has a tie up. That institute has a tie up with a very big hospitality group in France and a very big hospitality related teaching institution in France. And they had called me for uh, you know for for some purpose. So. Uh, their unique selling proposition is that they are able to award you two degrees in hospitality management. Upon closer examination, if it is found tomorrow that other degree is awarded, but the significance of that degree, that foreign degree, is not much. So supposing, suppose a, a journalist starts to investigate, dig. And he goes to that country. He finds out that that institution, which is uh, being portrayed as a very big institution, is nothing but a very small ragtag collection of institutes in a foreign country. And this story gets the magazine cover. The impact of such a thing on that Indian institution, which I am talking about. Are you are you are you getting my point? Suppose competitors they start indulging in a strategy which is aimed at exterminating your business. You should be able to understand it. You should be able to go to the uh, Competition Commission of India because you cannot indulge in practices which are aimed at eliminating other businesses. Even in a share market, if you see, yesterday HDFC's uh, managing director, uh, chairman, MD, or the top man, Mr. Puri, has sold off his entire stake before exiting HDFC. Have you read this? So he is the number one man of HDFC. He is going to retire in one or two months, and he has sold off all his shares of HDFC, except. So he used to have 0.7% uh, stake. Now he will have 0.1% stake. So what is meant? So media has to critically examine this. What is meant by selling all your stake? You sell all your stake, and you are an insider. What is meant by insider? You are within the organization, running the organization. You are an insider. You are a key stakeholder in the organization, and you are selling all your stake. So, is it a signal that your business is going downwards? Is it a signal that your business is going downwards? So, if a media analyst he gives this tilt to this piece of information, it can have a major impact on the share price of HDFC. But HDFC has managed this news very well. Uh, it has come as a it has come as a as a reportage in the business page of Times of India, and he has explained why he is exiting this. So you need to be very mind you need to be very uh, mindful. I saw uh, there was a lady in uh, Mumbai during the lockdown. She complained on Twitter that she was not able to get Pampers. You know Pampers that. Uh, that that brand of uh, disposable for babies, and she mentioned it on Twitter. And one of the sales representative from Pampers he went and delivered the supply. I don't know whether free or at a cost. So because you know, business running a business is highly complex, highly challenging, equally rewarding. So we must understand who are the stakeholders of our business organization. Thank you.